Welcome back to STL TV Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and I'm joined by Loriana Sikarski and Dan Lichman. We've been talking about Bonsai's program, mm -hmm. Loriana, and you're the president of Bonsai, and this great program that you started this year in conjunction with Monsanto mm -hmm. to help the uh, the students, the science students, the PhD candidates mm -hmm. at uh, the University of Missouri. So um, tell us um, a little bit more about the program. It's a year in length or nine mm -hmm. months in length. It's a two-semester program mm -hmm. and uh, one credit, so that way you go on their transcripts and they could show companies that they have actually taken the program. And it's several hours a week. Uh, last week, we, two weeks ago, we went to Monsanto for a site visit. Um, so we're trying to expose them to large companies, but also we went to the incubator. So what if one of them wants to consider starting their own business? Mm -hmm. So events like that. Um, but one of the things that I'm excited about is we've proven that we have increased emotional intelligence because mm -hmm. that was a, one of our goals. And after the first semester, all the students said they were more aware of their weaknesses and strengths especially the strengths, and also they were more aware of themselves. Now, self-awareness is a key part of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Extending beyond that, 92% were more aware of others and how to manage that relationship. So that's, that's really important. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about emotional mm -hmm. intelligence so that, that people sure. or our viewers really understand what that means in the workplace and also in our lives. Okay. So emotional intelligence has basically four components. One, it's self-awareness. And then along with understanding yourself and what, what might trigger you. Say mm -hmm. somebody says something, all of a sudden you get a little upset or you get sad, realizing that I'm having this reaction, but do I manage that reaction? Mm -hmm. So self-awareness, ability to manage yourself so you don't um, explode and get upset about something. And then the other piece is how do I, uh, am I aware of others around me? So for example, if I say something to Dan and he has a disturbed look on his face, do I just ignore that? Or do I go, hmm, maybe I said something that was mm -hmm. harmful and recover. And mm -hmm. so it's ability to influence and persuade. And so we work on that. Um, and I think a big part is getting outside your comfort zone too, mm -hmm. because you've got to be vulnerable to be able to understand yourself and others. And so we spend quite a bit of time on that and we found that that's built people's confidence. Right. So Dan, as a PhD student in mm -hmm. plant biology, mm -hmm. had you ever heard of emotional intelligence before you started this program? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I had not. <laughs> okay. And I think that's probably a pretty typical mm -hmm. response from mm -hmm. anybody in any field. Um, mm -hmm. It's a new concept in business and mm -hmm. using the emotional intelligence to help you succeed in the workplace as well. Mm -hmm. So given that you didn't know much about it mm -hmm. and w mm -hmm. now that you've been in the program for six or seven months, what is your, um, your feeling about it and its importance? It's extremely important. So science, you know, as time moves on, is becoming more and more collaborative. So instead of one group of people or one lab managing every single step of a project, you have different groups of people with different levels of expertise in different areas all working together. You have statisticians, computational biologists, plant biologists all working to kind of address some very complicated issues and questions. But unless you kind of take time to think about how to work within a group or how to kind of function mm -hmm well, um, you know, people are going to get angry with each other, have conflicts of interest, mm -hmm. and unless you manage that, then things are going to fall apart. Right. And we found there's a lot of conflict avoidance in the laboratories. As mm -hmm. the students talk, they'll just, there's some kind of odd personality sometimes, mm -hmm. and everybody just avoids. But when you avoid a problem, it just, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. It just festers, and mm -hmm. that is not healthy. And so it's how do you have healthy relationships and healthy conversations. And like you said, it's important at the home as well as work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Dan, now that you, are there certain things that you've learned in, in the program with Bonsai that you you feel moving forward going into a career down the road is going to stay with you and it's going to help you and, and if so what are those things I think being extremely open with people and let let people know what you're thinking don't just kind of keep it locked up you know in academics for example it's you know our time there is transient we graduate you know five six years and so mm -hmm. sometimes people's strategy is I'm just not going to say anything because eventually I'm going to leave or they're going to leave and I don't have to worry about it but that's not how it works in the workplace. Right. And so being open with people, addressing conflict when there's an issue, instead of just pushing it off. Yeah. So, in, um, Loriana, mm -hmm. you've had a lot of success, obviously, with the st statistics that you're sharing with us about mm -hmm. the, 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 the manners and the ways in which the students have grown mm -hmm. this year. And some of them are wrapping up, so graduating mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So you must be really proud as they I really am. move forward. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you would do differently um, with the program now that you've kind of seen it implemented and um, or do you have 
plans to for any changes or anything like that? I think, you know, when we started the program, it actually implemented quite a bit differently because I met with each of the students last summer and asked about what they were interested in learning. And so we're going to have a new cohort come through and we're accepting applications now. I'll be interviewing the students. And once I've got the next class, I'm going to be talking with them because it's very personal. Yeah. I take a very deep interest in each student and their needs are probably going to be different slightly than this group's needs. And there are new things I want to incorporate in the program. Uh, this time around and little different emphasis areas, but each time it's going to be a little different based on who the students are. Mm -hmm. But in all cases, I think your open word is really important. I stress that authenticity, that we're not trying to make them a certain type of leader. We're trying to take who they are and make the best person that each of them can be. Mm -hmm. And that's based on their own individual strengths and abilities. Very good. Well, thank you both so much for sharing this with mm -hmm. us today. We look forward to hearing more. And Dan, good luck to you as you move continue on in your in your studies. Thank you. For more information on Bonsai, you can visit their website at growwithbonsai.com or call 314-540-6114. We'll be back with the Webster Groves Herb Society after this break.